Kelly Bear here. Welcome to the let's try and make a video without the doorbell or my phone ringing challenge. <sighs> and 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 whatever is going on with the weather outside because it's cloudy and then it's sunny and then it's cloudy and then it's sunny and it doesn't matter I have to keep changing the settings on my camera and it's getting on my tits so we're just going we're just gonna go we're just gonna do it it's it's bright it's blown out but it could change in two minutes who knows and yeah I'm just I'm never gonna get it done if I if I don't if I don't just do it so necessary sip of coffee decaffeinated amaretto syrup yum so good i've got some gingerbread syrup as well i'm gonna maybe have a gingerbread latte tomorrow in case you were wondering what i was drinking lately so yeah oh my god what is this video about well you'll see it is my january favorites um i'm really bad at doing favorites videos monthly favorites videos because either i just don't feel like doing them so i'm not going to force myself to do something i don't feel like there was a time where i felt like i should be doing them because everyone seemed to be doing them um and also partly because i'm really bad at writing down or noting down what my favorite things are and often i enjoy a lot of the same things month in and month out like i am always watching slash listening to critical role because there is a butt ton of it and that's mostly what i like to listen to when i when i work um or they you know i'm always listening to certain podcasts i'll always be listening to the ghost story guys or myths and monsters or you know like witchy podcasts <laughs> um they're just sort of tried and true so it feels a bit weird just to say well this was also my favorite again it's like me with the tower of the magical forest it's always going to be one of my top if not my top most favorite beloved deck um and, and mentioning it in every single video is probably quite boring for you and sort of a little bit embarrassing for me maybe <laughs> so um but not this time I actually, I've been using my, my paper planner, my physical planner again, uh, from the beginning of this year. And I deliberately, deliberately on the back of my January tasks list had a page just for favorites. And I ended up dividing it into decks, books, podcasts, YouTube channels, shows or films, music and misc. Um, so I will try to kind of do it in that order. Um, obviously the decks are probably the thing that you're here for most and then then probably books or a bit of both so i'm just going to jump straight into those oh and the other the, the thing that i just wanted to give this another go because i really enjoy watching other people's favorites um i found some really cool like books or decks or you know youtube channels or what have you from from watching other people so i'm just you know i thought maybe people are always like oh you always have good podcast recs i do really need to do a podcast rec video i know i do i know i do i haven't done one for about three years and there's loads of other podcasts that i listen to since then and some that i have stopped listening to for various reasons so let's get into the decks so um one, two, i've got three tarot decks and two oracle decks and um two of them were new this year um but i'll just go into the tarot decks so the first one is i've been loving loving the raven's prophecy tarot i rebought this at the end of last year because my copy was so like beyond messed up from a really sticky pen that i had re-edged it in and i hadn't really been able to use this deck properly for a few years and it was driving me bananas because i remember when i first had this deck and i had edged it in either black or orange i can't remember just a regular pen an alcohol pen and it, it worked really nicely um and i was i was gutted um that i couldn't really use it and i kept saying oh i'll get a new copy i'll get a new copy but then i didn't want to buy a deck that i already had which is stupid because since i've rebought it for myself i didn't modify it i've actually come to rather enjoy the the orange borders um i once oh, i did buy it i, I i've barely stopped using the bloody thing i've loved it and i'm like oh yes now i remember why i liked this deck in the first place and why i was so upset when i fudged the fucking the the uh the mod on it so there we go it's it's just the colors i love the black background i love the simplicity of it i like the pippishness of it i really now enjoy the the orange borders i really like the the sort of handwritten style font 
um, uh, you know, for the titles of the cards. I love that it's got ravens in it because who doesn't love a crow or a raven? Corvid's rock. Um, I love all the hands. As someone who uses the hands, I mean, just, just, just look at. Come on, camera, don't be a douche canoe. So you know, the artwork is just stunning. I have not read the books related to this. I would like to one day. Um, I mean. Come on. Yeah. Isn't that gorgeous? You can really feel the warmth of the glow of that lamp. So I have used this a lot. If you follow me on my personal Instagram, slash Tamara Instagram, you'll see that I've been using this for um, week ahead readings um, quite a bit. I don't post all my readings up on my Instagram, but like sometimes I do. So yeah, this one. I am so pleased I re-bought this and I got it for a really good price as well. So super chuffed. Um, another one that came in last year, um, Taroki by Mr. Freeborg. I've got goosebumps just mentioned just saying the name. There's just, the deck is just sumptuous is the word. Sumptuous. It is so scrummy. Um, I adore the Delft Blue China style backs for a start. And it just, you know, I, I, have a, I have a couple of Italian decks that I really like. I have the Taroki So Profino that a friend very kindly gifted me. And it's great because it's small and I love the size of it. I used it quite a lot last year. Um, this is a larger size deck. Um, but I love the, the skull faces. I love me some skulls. Come on camera, don't be a banana. I love the skull faces. I love the colours. I love... Um, actually I did sort of compare some for myself, compared some of the cards against my Soprofino and some of the cards you are sort of taken from that but then also from other Italian decks that I don't know. Um, but it's just, you know, it's a pip deck. I love pip decks. So it's, it's a pip, not a Marseille. That's that saying, all Marseille are pip decks, but not all pip decks are Marseille. Um, but it's, yeah, and the colour, the, the pinks and the purples and the blues and the lavenders. It is yummo. I do have the expansion pack, which I haven't used with the main deck, I have to be honest. I feel like I need to do some um, research about Minky Arty and watch some videos about Minky Arty before I start trying to incorporate this and they are covered in the book but I just I don't know it's just I'm a nerd and I like to get into like research rabbit holes I don't know but, but I am um, because originally I was like I don't want to use this deck until I've learned about this but I was like who am I kidding I want to I want to play um yeah beautiful um sumptuous deck um, I've been trying to come up with pairings for it as well um, I was doing that the other day at the weekend <laughs> I was pulling out loads of decks and doing some combos so maybe I'll do a video about that once I've landed on some that I really like um, what did I do with that I did have a pile of decks that I'd paired up I don't know where I've put it I've got piles of different piles of decks for different things Oh, um, and then um, the other tarot that I have came into my life earlier this month. I'm filming this on the the 31st of January. Get me. I'm like trying to be on it like a car bonnet. Um, and this was gifted to me to, the, to by the lovely Sandra over at the Whispers of Avalon. The book is a decent chunky size for, um, a, for you know, being a little, little white book. Um, really really loving the book I really love the um the artist and writer's um take on the tarot I like that it's all sort of it's all non-binary it's a question um, getting you to sort of um push yourself beyond those binaries there's some really good readings in here that I haven't tried yet but want to try um really really great um and I actually think I prefer this to the the indie version. I so nearly when I found out this came out mass mark was coming out mass market, I did go and have a look on Little Red Tarot and I did see that Beth Maiden had some copies of this still. And I was so close to just buying the the indie version because I was like, oh, but I just want it now. But I held off um, because mostly, to be honest, because of the money issue, and I still wasn't a hundred percent sure on a couple of a couple of 
um, cards with regards to just the artwork but a lot of that has been changed I prefer the backs I prefer that a lot of the artwork now fills the um, cards I prefer that we get the title so it's much easier to actually identify the cards that's really important that was another one that was sort of a thing that was putting me off getting them the the indie version i was hoping that they would make certain changes to the mass market one which they did um i i'm the only card i actively don't like in this is the devil i don't know if i can find it which is a shame because the devil is usually one of my favorite cards and one of the cards that it can be a bit of a make or break for me this is testament to how good this deck is because it didn't break the deck for me um usually it would be the death card just gets me just beautiful beautiful one of those beautiful death cards i've ever seen oh so powerful um meow 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 hang on there we go here we go the devil i just it's just it's it, it skews very definitely to sort of the negative and i try to find some positive or some, you know neutrality in each tarot card but that feels very difficult or difficult to do absolute longness so grateful to sandra for sending this to me i'm classing it as a chris birthday present because i got it in between christmas and my birthday so <laughs> absolutely love it there's not all the cards in here i actually got some cards aside because i used it as part of my solar return spread um uh, last week so those are the tarot decks i'm going to need to sip my coffee because i don't want it to go cold and look i can't let a whole massive mug go cold that'd be such a waste and such a shame Oh, sorry, nearly... Anyway, Oracle decks. So one of the Oracle decks came into my life last year and one was new this year already. So the first one is, again, the Pocket Animal Spirit Animal. Again, I mean, if you look on my Instagram, you will see that I've been using this. I love this deck and I love that it's we. Like, I was like, do I need the large one? I don't think I even want the large one. It's because I have the regular sized tarot and the pocket tarot and i love the pocket version of the tarot as well but i just like that it's i just like small things i just like mini but make it mini means it's like it's just cute is anyone else like a bit obsessed with mini things look at this this has i feel like it has a nice balance of animals and i know that some people didn't enjoy the fact that it's got you know like a unicorn in it or like cosmic eggs but i feel like it's an important squeeze me an important addition like i love that it's got bees and moths and come on come on uh, it's got moths and butterflies which a lot of decks don't have i think it's got moth and butterfly but then it's got bees and ants and i see that sometimes bees and ants will be one or the other in an animal deck because they are they are community group uh teamwork type ca characters creatures right so some people will use the bee because they work as a team and then some people use ants because you know ants work as a team but like this has both right it, there's nuance there i love the little foil accents but you know i haven't pulled that many there's a lot of how many cards are in this deck uh 63 that's quite a lot 63 cards 63 animals or creatures animals spirits of animals um but yeah i've only been pulling usually one a week so there's an i haven't gone got anywhere near and i haven't done every single week so i haven't pulled most of these de these cards honestly and the funniest thing is nearly every si i've pulled now at this point it's getting beyond a joke i've pulled I was looking at my tarot journal nearly every single card from the water suit of this deck and actually i've pulled one of the water suits twice and the other ones that i have pulled have been from the air so it's only water and air which is funny because i'm an aquarius which is an air sign which is the water bearer so make of that what you will but yeah keep pulling the water suit so i think there might be a lesson in that but loving this and it just i don't know just just love it. Uh, the other one is the Monica Badersky Between the Worlds Oracle. It took me a while to get into this because I did feel like I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing with it. I did try to use it for a week ahead reading two or three weeks ago where I pulled one card for the, uh, what's it called? Brrr, come on brain. Um, 
what's the thing? Um, I have like a section that I do three cards and then something and support. Why can't my brain through my brain? I can't. My brain fog is so bad. And it's my own spread. Where's my tarot journal? Come, not comfort and support. It's gonna bug me. I'm gonna have to pause because my brain, my brain fog is just not letting me access the information I'm trying to access. Hold on. Damn it! As I got up to walk over to get my journal, I remembered it's encourage a message of encouragement and support. I've only been doing that kind of reading for like ages. And yet, for some reason, it wouldn't just come to mind for me. But yes, usually what I do is I do a th freestyle for quite a while now. Freestyle, three cards. Occasionally, I do do a f like four or five card week ahead spread, like the coffee, the coffee cup spread or whatever. But most of the time, it's three cards, freestyle, just open reading, and then an oracle card for encouragement, a message of encouragement and or support. This doesn't, this doesn't work for that. Um, I I have found maybe it's just a couple of the cards that I've pulled just don't work for that and I found that another oracle that doesn't work for that is the Earthbound Oracle but from Skull Garden I find there are cards in that that are actually really not very positive at all and then getting that as a message of encouragement and support was really sort of like being kicked in the tits so <laughs> I'm like I'm not going to use this oracle deck for this kind of reading right so sometimes I see um, people you know context is everything so you need to have the um, the right question and the right spread for your reading but sometimes you also need the right deck tarot can sometimes be so people say tarot is tarot is tarot and that's fine but when it comes to oracle decks they're so different and some have systems and some don't i really have discovered over trying to use oracle deck as more especially in the last year or so that some oracle decks really don't lend themselves to you know the way that i do my week ahead reading but in an open reading this this works quite nicely or in sort of a Lenormand style reading or in like a yeah like rows of three do you like my three cards <laughs> three is the magic number um i have yet to try any like actual spread spreads with it where a spread means a particular thing and i can't remember if this has spreads in it i don't think it does have spreads does it have spreads in the book i cannot remember meow 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 um how to use the cards 200 i can't remember shit my memory is fucked um shuffling questions helpful combos weather uh, correspondences and what what and have a new oh yeah there are yeah there are spreads in it i had forgot because my brain is bobbins um i haven't tried any of these but now i'm like why haven't i tried any of these probably because i forgot there, there were readings in there i'm gonna pick i'm gonna do you know what i'm gonna put this on my bed and put it aside to try one of these readings later because i'm like what am i like but yeah i'm really just enjoying this just just playing just doing sort of freestyle but yeah i'm gonna try it with the actual recommended readings and then get back to you on that maybe next month we'll, we'll see if i'm if it's still in a favorites Mew. okay so that's the decks what are we in we're 18 minutes of absolute fucking tit waffle all right let's go books i have three books one of which i finished two of which i have not but i am loving them so the first one is folk witchcraft by roger j horn i started reading this and i was like oh this isn't what i thought it was going to be and i was sort of a bit like hmm but actually i was like we'll just keep reading it and i kept reading it and actually i really enjoyed it once i got over i speak, spoke about this when i showed this book in my christmas book, uh, christmas haul video um and i had already read it by then or was halfway through it i think um yeah i think i was halfway through it but yeah loved it i really really enjoyed the grammar section the grimoire section really fun lots of really interesting um there we go the grammar um really like charms and incantations and rites and just yeah it's it's just good fun we've got braided charms we've got a witch's ladder all good stuff illustration charm um rowan and red thread like a little talisman with rowan berry and red thread just like really simple spit and sawdust i always do it because like um 
the whole idea of uh, sorcery or dirt sorcery, dirt sorcery as um, Aidan Wachter calls it in his books or just when he's talking about his magic and um, when I first read that I was like when I first heard him talking about being like a rocks and sticks kind of guy I'm like yeah me but I've come to sort of started calling my own version spit and sawdust i do sometimes use spit as my magic and in my works i haven't actually used any sawdust but spit and sawdust i don't know if that translates across the pond but here in the uk or at least in london like spit and sawdust means somewhere that's a bit sort of rough and ready so you know back in the day historically um ale houses pubs they would have sawdust or straw on the floor to help soak up you know beer that was spilled vomit piss blood from fights that kind of thing and i think that's where this, the people would just spit on the ground because you know people were way grosser back then and less aware of germs although sometimes i do wonder when i see the way people <laughs> i hate when i see people spitting in public um they um yes the spit and sawdust was always right spit and sawdust obviously fine establishments did not do such a thing so yeah i always say was my, my my practice very spit and sawdust uh, that's what i mean <laughs> anyway and funnily enough i'll talk about the spit and sawdust in a second but i'm also oh oh so close to finishing master in magic by matt oren really enjoying this um lots of useful information lots of really um good um exercises that i want to try i don't think i want to try all of them i definitely have my own way of doing certain things i some of the things i do have my own way of doing but i want to try this way of doing things and some of it is sort of like you know this is i think this is a, a really good foundational book for people who are starting out along with the sister book psychic witch that this does come up magic it is talking about like psychism and psychic development so it's not a full primer on magic because it doesn't cover other parts of magic um and it's not perfect there are things in there that i don't just that i don't agree with or spells in there um matt has um guest guest witches who offer some spells in here as well um and i don't some of them i really don't jive with at all there's one that uses glitter and it's all a bit like la 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 and i'm like that's really not my bag at all <laughs> really not my bag at all but it's interesting and it looks like for, if it is your bag you would probably find it quite fun but um i do like that there is a mix of other people's working like spells in here like laura tempest Akroff is one of the first spells guests in here and i really liked hers so you know it just depends on you know so it just depends um but i'm really enjoying it and once i finished it i'm gonna be dipping in and out of that i have so many books that i'm like working with reading through working with i do that i don't know why i keep doing bone and bone but it is but i keep doing that because i'll work with it for a bit and then get distracted by a different book <laughs> And then work with a little bit and then i'll go oh yeah but i was working with making magic by brianna saucy i was originally meant to work through that i was kind of like i'm going to do this in a year and a day have i fucked no i'm just really slowly dipping in and out of that as well as six ways always always and changeling and this and psychic which too many things on the go when i was just working with six ways things were so much more simple because i just but and i was like i'm going to expand and then i probably expanded a bit too quickly and gave myself overwhelm right third and final book again not finished halfway through new world witchery this was in my birthday book birthday hall uh corey hutchinson of new world witchery podcast fame that he also does with lane highly recommend their podcast um i am loving 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 this is gonna be something that i refer to and treasure forever until i am dust because it's just it's just really laid out in a very interesting way um it, it, it i just love the way corey has um has there's just different sections he has chapters about different subjects but then those chapters are broken up into bits about the history and then examples of this work and then you know there'll be like a, a spotlight on a an, on a, a, a historical practitioner that he felt that we should know about zora neale hurston's in here which is really exciting and actually zora neale hurston's works are cited in the footnotes there's citation which makes me happy there's also citation in this which makes me happy do you love a bit of citation 
and there's bits about things for you to try and um, like there's bits called dirt under the nails and then there's the bits called the work for work for you to do there's a really cute um, like really like really fun like little sketches and it's just it's so interesting anyway those are the three books oh and the thing i was joking about um talking about dirt sorcery i'm a rocks and stones kind of rocks and sticks kind of guy that quote from Aidan Walker is at the beginning of one of these chapters and i was reading it yesterday morning and it made me laugh because like yeah <laughs> rocks and sticks it's totally my bag um, okay, so that is, that's the like the main stuff. So we're nearly half an hour in, holy moly. I'm just gonna tick these off to show that I've, to myself, that I've shown them. Okay, let's go straight into YouTube channels. There are like a buttload of channels that I've been watching recently over the last like two months maybe. And maybe I need to do a separate video <clears throat> for them because I don't think I can mention all of them here. It would just get really long and I would like to be able to talk about all of them. But, um, a highlight for me has been Saoirse Soaring. I discovered Saoirse's channel two or three months ago and I've been really enjoying her content. She is a stitching witch, which I appreciate. Um, she um, loves Brian Froud probably even more than I do. Um, she lives in Ireland, which is really cool. She talks about that and like folk witchcraft. She's into historical sewing and traditional uh, historical clothing, like clothing history and history bounding, which again, I'm absolutely just so jazzed to to, to um, talk about and listen, listen to because that's also something I really enjoy. I watch a lot of history, um, historical sewing tube. Um, and I come from a formal uh, fashion and uh, sewing background, so that's really, really my bag. Um, and then one that isn't tarot, and that's all like tarot and witchcraft related. And then one that is nothing to do with tarot or witchcraft, but I have been mainlining. <laughs> Me and my husband have just been obsessed with this channel. I was like, you have to watch this channel. Because I watched one of their videos and went, I think it was their Love Actually one was the first one I watched. And I watched that on my own and then I was like, I need to watch this with my husband uh, and it's cinema therapy it's a really big channel they've got like one and a quarter million followers i don't know how it wasn't recommended to me sooner because i love these kinds of channels and it is a filmmaker and a licensed therapist who are besties since college their relationship is adorable they are so much fun and they talk about they talk about cinema and looking so they have like therapist reacts videos but then they also break down sort of the psychology of characters they do a whole psychology of a hero um series and they've done a lot of the marvel ones they've also done the psychology of a villain and they've done a lot of marvel ones and other ones they've looked at like relationship dynamics dynamics or parenting styles for like Coraline or um you know what red flags in relationships for like romantic films oh it's so much fun it's just that and there too and then they, one of the, the the filmmaker guy Alan it's like I think me and my husband need to start a drinking game <laughs> because it's like take a shot it would be a shot of water a sip of water because I don't really drink alcohol <laughs> take a sip every time Alan cries it's adorable I love it and the pair of them are just hilarious so cinema therapy yay shows and films oh my god I actually watched a lot of films um I don't want to list them all here so I'm just not going to bother but for shows I'm on my like third or fourth rewatch of Our Flag Means Death. It's now available on BBC iPlayer. Thank goodness it started earlier this month. Um, and I'm actually going to be doing a group party watch of the show starting this Thursday for three Thursdays in a row. We're going to we're going to watch um, the entire series over the space of three Thursday evenings. Um, and I can't wait to watch it again. All of us have seen it at least twice through before. And there's like one person who hasn't seen it at all, which is very, I'm like envious they're getting to see it for the first time. I've really been enjoying season, f is it season four? Yeah, season four of What We Do in the Shadows because What We Do in the Shadows, I just love that show. Um, Lockwood and Co slipped in right at the last minute. I watched Lockwood and Co every single episode over Friday, Saturday and Sunday night. I've been I like I did the whole thing. There's only eight episodes, so I think I did like three no, I did two episodes. 
two episodes and then Sunday and Sunday I've watched all the remaining four I was obsessed it's like a combination of Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets Sherlock meets Ghostbusters I love it it's based on books that I've never read but it's Joe Cornish of Adam the Adam and Joe show fame if you know who Adam Joe uh, Adam Cornish Adam Buxton and Joe Cornish are then if you know you know but um he, uh, Joe Cornish was the writer and director behind Attack the Block, which is one of my favourite horror sci-fi films. I love that film because I see a lot of myself and my my childhood in that, like like running around on estates, people getting into trouble, like cheeky kids. <laughs> <laughs> I really like it. So yeah, and then I I'm I've been watching um Trapped, the Nordic the um the Icelandic show. It the season one and two are on Prime, and I was one I was like really I finished season two in, in December, and I was like oh man I really want to watch season three, and then season three turned up on Netflix, uh but they've called it season three is named N Trapped on netflix instead of trapped i don't know why but i'm really into nordic noir like especially norwegian and icelandic stuff so if you have any recommendations for nordic noir let me know but i highly recommend uh, i highly recommend trapped slash untrapped so that's what i've been enjoying um and then music wise i've been enjoying my three favorite main ones that i've been enjoying for the last few months which is monoskin calandra and gunship in case you're interested podcast podcast important um i'm i'm the, again i need to do a video on the podcasts that i've been enjoying but these are two podcasts that i found this month rather than giving you the list of all the podcasts that i listen to all the time that i've been listening to for ages um one of them is the emerald this podcast was one that i discovered when i was looking into trying to sort out my thoughts around um animism and pantheism and that kind of thing and i i did link the episode that i listed listened to below in the description box of that video um and i've listened since listened to a couple of other episodes and can verify it's really 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 good podcast really enjoy it um, and then the other one that i found a couple of weeks ago is the magic kitchen podcast which is all about kitchen witchery and i'm listening from the beginning so i'm only a few episodes in but i'm really just i'm just really enjoying it i just i just it just tickles me it's it, i enjoy kitchen witchery um and green green witchcraft so um yeah it's making it's making me happy it's tickling that little witchy side of my brain so those are all oh miscellaneous miscellaneous english breakfast tea and amaretto lattes made with barista oat milk those are my two favorite tipples lately decaffeinated unfortunately um and then i've really been loving this ring that i bought a couple of months ago at a local fair at my local Ooh. it's got a shell come on camera it's so pretty um and then i'm loving the gold necklace that i received oh my god i was not prepared i should have to, i just realized i put these bits of jewelry on my list and then i'm wearing them because i love them so much so this beautiful necklace made from a threepence that my mother-in-law gave me for my birthday last week oh come on camera it's stunning it's got a little oak leaf as well attached and i'm obsessed i love it i might get an actual silver chain to put it on um and then my i've got them in so you can't see them but i have my husband gave me for christmas one of my presents was um the the door knocker ear the door knocker earrings from labyrinth you know the one with the thing in his mouth and the one with the hoop through his ears that's what these are <laughs> and then you can see the little hanging knockers boop 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 <laughs> i love them i've been wearing them loads so those are my favorite things that i've been wearing other than just trying to snuggle up in warm cozy things because it's been fucking cold it's been baltic anyway that is all my favorites those are all of my favorites um i don't know if i'll do one next month we will see um but yeah thank you for joining me did you have some favorite tarot or oracle decks or normal decks for uh, january what was your favorite show are you as obsessed with our flag means death as i am do you enjoy do have you did you check out the emerald podcast 
uh, what else? Um, have you read New World Witchery or any of the other books that I showed? Or are they on your to-read list, to-buy list? Let me know. I want to know. Um, tell me your faves. Tell me what you think of my faves. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. I appreciate you. Take care of yourself.